Phil is asking in the chat, when will the WSOP schedule be released? Well, you tell us. Yeah, please. Um, usually around this time, I'll say that. I'm hoping that we'll get it soon. That means we can all start planning for the summer filled with poker action. Donnie, we're coming up on a week of rain in Las Vegas. In this episode of Weekly Poker Hand, I, Jonathan Little, am playing at the final table of a $25,000 buy-in tournament. I'm in the best possible spot you could be in, where Reardon has 12 big blinds, Justin Sleba and Justin Zaki both have about 25 big blinds, and I have a whole mountain of chips. I can't even count how many big blinds this is. Something like 70. That's a good spot. Folds around to Justin Zaki in the small blind. He has a seven offsuit. If he was shallower stacked, like let's say 15 big blinds, he should probably just go all in. But 24 big blinds, whatever he has, is a little bit too deep to shove. So his options become limp or raise. And I think he can go either way. He can mix it up. But in general, you certainly don't mind calling and hopefully seeing a somewhat cheap showdown with your ace high. His problem though, is that he has the big stack on his direct left. After he does decide to limp, I have the 8-4 offsuit, and I can go both ways between checking or raising. I have been playing a lot of pots at this final table, and I think my opponents may be getting a little bit frustrated with that, so that's going to make me want to slow down a little bit in general. Like, if you're playing at a table with three other players only, and you're winning way more than your fair share of the pots, and you're not really showing down a whole lot of hands, your opponents will start to get somewhat call happy against you. And they'll start trying to trap you more. So if you think that's happening, you should maybe not bluff quite as often. So look, raising here is fine with your junky offsuit hands like 9-5, 8-4, 7-4, four, four, stuff like that. But at the same time, checking and seeing the flop is good too. We check. Let's go to the flop. I really miss triple digits. <laughs> I really miss... <laughs> I don't know if I miss triple digits, man. I don't know, I don't know if I'm going to go that far. Okay, fair enough. I miss the warm weather though. I'm a big fan of the heat. 3 3 5 on this flop. Let's see who can bring the heat in this one. Little bet 60k with just 8 4. Zaki not going to let this one slide. Comes along with a7. The flop comes. 5, 3, 3. Justin Zaki with his ace high makes a very standard check. If he bets and gets called or raised, he's going to have no clue what to do. And he has a hand that just wants to cheat, see a cheap showdown. I, however, have 8 high, which is not a hand that wants to see a cheap showdown. And I have a 4, which gives me a lot of backdoor straight draws, which will allow me to continue betting on a whole lot of turns that improve my equity. So I'm going to bet. Pot's 180k, I go for a one big blind bet of 60k. You may ask, why so tiny? Well, this is a spot where when you are the big stack at a final table, you often want to use frequent aggression, aggression, I can barely say that word, frequent, frequent aggression <laughs> for small amounts. This essentially allows me to build the pot such that I can get my opponent all in by the river when I feel inclined. And that forces Zaki right off the bat to do a lot of overfolding with stuff like king eight offsuit or hands like that. And obviously if you can get your opponent to fold out king high, queen high, jack high without any sort of backdoor equity on this type of board, that's fantastic. So I'm going to go for this tiny one big blind bet and um, the plan's not to slow down every single time. You're going to find that betting with the eight high one time for one big blind and then not putting in any more bluffs is usually not ideal. I go for one big blind, he calls as he should. Let's head to the turn. Nine of diamonds on the turn. Zaki happy to keep this pot small. It's Riyad is asking, who do you think is going to win this? Well, Jay Little has been putting on a clinic the last 90 minutes or the so. The turn is the nine of diamonds. Justin Zaki checks, and now I have to decide if I want to continue bluffing. In this situation, I think the first hands I want to be bluffing with are hands that have some equity when I am called. Those are going to be hands like open-ended and gut shot straight draws, like 4-2, 6-2, 7-4, 8-4, 9-5, 10-5, 11-5, 12-5, 13-5, 14-5, 15-5, 16-5, 17-5, 18-5, 19-5, 20-5, 21
6-2, and 7-6, right? All those have basically no showdown value, but they have some extra equity when I bet and get called. That's already a lot of bluffs, especially if I'm checking a decent chunk of those preflop. Now, if I'm raising a lot of those preflop, I may not have them in my range, but if I'm checking them, I have a ton of combinations. What else would I like to bluff? Well, it's going to be hands with an overcard to the nine that lack showdown value. That's going to be stuff like random 10 high, jack high, and queen high. Because when Zachy check calls my flop bet, he probably has a whole lot of hands like ace high or king high or uh, two lower cards that have some sort of backdoor flush draw. And uh, I'm really trying to get ace high and king high to fold if I do make a bet. He will sporadically have a nine that check called the flop like king nine, right? So that's the reason you want to have a jack or a 10 or perhaps a queen in your in your hand whenever you do continue bluffing. So the question becomes, should I take this total airball bluff, the 8-4 offsuit and bluff it? And I think the answer is just no, because I have a lot of potential bluffs that I think I'd rather bluff before this hand that have some amount of equity. So I'm going to let this one go check, check, and we'll see what develops on the river. Prior to that, Justin Zaki was in full control. John Reardon started as the chip leader, and Justin Saliba started as a short stack. So everyone has sort of a story attached to their run at this final table right now. But let me give, let me give you this stat. The river is the queen of clubs, and Justin Zaki checks. Before I tell you what I do in this scenario, what do you think I should do? Do you think I should check it back and lose? Do you think I should bet tiny, like one big blind, 60K? Should I bet medium, like 150K? Or should I go big, pot size, or potentially even bigger? Take a second, think about it, and let me know what you would do in the comments section down below. And while you're down there, click the like and subscribe button for me. This is hand 69, which is very nice. Jay Little has won 20 hands. Zaki has won 14, and Saliba and Reardon have both won seven hands. Of the last 10, Jay Little has won seven. He's won the last four in a row, trying to add it add a fifth into there as well. And now he bets 150 on the river. Can Zaki suss this one out? Given I just told you, I would bet a lot of my open-ended and gut shot straight draws on the turn, as well as a decent amount of 10 high and jack high. What are the worst hands I can have on the river? Well, very clearly, this 8-4 is one of them. So this is a spot where I'm probably going to bluff with a lot of my hands that cannot win at the showdown. A nice uh, thing about this scenario is that I'd also bluff a decent amount of queen highs on the turn that just made top pair, which is a really good made hand. So how much would I like to bet with a queen? A nine if I had it, like nine two that may bet the flop and then check back the turn, as well as potentially a five. You may say, is a five good enough to value bet in this spot? I think it is because I think Zachy's gonna have a lot of ace high and king high. Well, if you say one big blind, you're probably wrong. This is a spot where, in general, in position, your smallest bet size should be something like half pot, maybe a little bit less because there are payout implications. Um, typically, the, mini the minimum bet is usually reserved for the out-of-position player. Just good, strong GTO poker. Check out pokercoaching.com. We discuss this thoroughly in the river section of the tournament masterclass, as well as the cash game masterclass. So make sure you check it out. So if my options are, in reality, to bet something like half pot or bigger, I definitely can't bet bigger with a five. And I probably can't bet bigger with a nine than something like half pot. Certainly a queen would like to bet using a bigger size to try to get full value from a random nine, five or ace high. But given most of my range in the spot, I think it's gonna be a five or maybe a queen sometimes. I think we need to go for something like half pot. Also in general, when you are bluffing, you wanna consider the hands that you have in your range that need to bluff and as a general rule, this doesn't always hold true, but as a general rule, you're going to want to take your absolute lowest showdown value hands, like eight high, and use those in your small river betting size, presuming you want to have multiple bet sizes, which I probably do in this spot, because if I did have a slow played three, I'd love to bet big, right? So I think this is a spot where we need to go for the medium 150k bet, which is what I do. Let's see if Zachy finds the call. With just ace high, that's the question. He is reaching. Zaki studying the board. Little just gazing off into the distance. Fold. He does fold, and it's five in a row for Jonathan Little. 
he is in absolute control of this final table. After a while, Zaki finds the fold, and I certainly don't fault him for it. That said, given I have won 20 out of the last 69 pots, I'm obviously not sitting here and just getting totally hit by the deck. Certainly, maybe I'm getting running a little bit hot, but I must be stealing some pots without a showdown, which I have been doing. And if Zaki calls here and loses, he's still going to have 1.2 million, which is roughly the same as Saliba, so I don't think it's that big of a deal to call and lose. Whereas if he calls and wins, he's going to get bumped up to something like 1.8 million chips or so, which is a decent amount more than Saliba. So I think he probably needs to find the call in general on the spot. Also, I as a chip leader am incentivized to do a lot of bluffing. Um, so given some of the draws missed, although like I told said, I may bet a lot of those on the turn. Um, but given the fact that I will have some hands like random eight high, random 10 high, that didn't bet the turn that will feel very inclined to bluff the river, I think he just needs to find a crying call, but it's certainly a close spot and I definitely don't fault him for folding. That's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, click the like and subscribe button below. And if you ever find yourself with eight high on the river, I hope your bluff gets through.